Tom, um, just start one of these. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Mr. Bell uh, of Collar Solicitors, uh, acting for the claimants, Best You Heat Dilcher Limited. Yes. Uh, my friend here, uh, Mr. Fairman, uh, acting for the defendant, Mrs. Flora Johnson, trading as uh, Flora Exotica. Sir, this is an application for summary judgment by the claimants in pursuit of a debt action. Yes. This is with regards to uh, a contract dated the 12th of April 2010 for the installation of a heating system in the defendant's greenhouses. Uh, this was for the sum of £16,450, uh, installed on the 2nd of July uh, 2010, uh, payment for which was due on the 30th of July 2010. Yes. Uh, may I uh, just check now, sir, that you have received the documents on which I intend yes, to... Yes, please do. Uh, do you have the quotation uh, from the, the claimants dated yes. March 2010? Yes, I've got that. The witness statement, sorry, in support of the uh, application made by Flory Williams, dated 19th of November 2010? Yes, I have that from the record, from the video. The document uh, GW1? Yes. The witness statement opposing the application, dated 6th of December? Yes, I've got that. And the document FJ1, a letter from Snooky, son of Kilcher? Yes, I have that. Well, thank you, sir. I'm grateful. Um, I understand you've had a busy list, sir. May I inquire as to whether you've had the time to read over these documents? I found time to peruse them, <laughs> so I don't know. Thank you, sir. Grateful. Um, you only have one issue to decide today, sir, uh, and that is whether the defendant has a real, uh, a real prospect of defending the claim at trial. If I may now refer to the material facts and documents, sir. Um, yes. May I bring to your attention the document quotation? Yes. <coughs> this is dated 2010, sir, and at the top of the document you will see that the unit price and VAT is specified for the total of £16,450. Yes. Also below, under the general terms and conditions, uh, it's clearly stated that payment is due within 28 days of installation. Uh, as previously mentioned, sir, installation took place on the 2nd of July. Yes. Therefore, payment was due on the 30th of July, 2010. Yes. Furthermore, below, it is also clearly stated that on clean completion of the installation of the heating system, uh, it would be test run mm -hmm. at that time. Yes. And the paragraph goes on to specify uh, give further details as to the effective, uh, efficient main maintenance of the, the heating system, uh, specifically to fill the oil tank and maintain minimum levels. Yes. May I also refer you to uh, the special terms and conditions below. Yes. This uh, states that the heating system uh, is installed as per specification dated 8th of February 2010 and also provides uh, uh, further details as to uh, maintenance, specifically uh, keeping the greenhouse windows and doors shut uh, in order to maintain the uh, temperature of 4 degrees yeah. centigrade. That's the defendant's specification. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, and lastly, sir, may I point out at the bottom of the document under the heading agreement, uh, the document, the, the quotation is signed and dated by the defendant yes. under the terms that she accepts the quotation, including the general and any special terms and conditions. Yes. So may I point out that it suggests that the uh, defendant accepts the contract as these are clear and unambigu unambiguous uh, contract terms. Thank you, yes. Uh, may I refer you please to the document, uh, the witness statement in support of application? Yes. If I may bring your attention to paragraph 5, in the, on the third line of this paragraph, uh, the uh, witness, uh, Flory Williams, who is the managing director for the claimant company, states that uh, the installation was provided as per the detailed specification dated 8th of February 2010. This sir, was uh, noted in the terms of the contract. Yes. And goes on to give details as to the price and VAT. Um, may I point out, sir, that this uh, shows that the uh, claimant firm were aware at all times of the specific needs and requirements of the defendant. Yes. And may I refer you please to paragraph 7, sir? Yes. Uh, the witness gives uh, information as to when the heating system was installed, specifically on the 2nd of July 2010, uh, and that she went on, that site, on site that day and tested uh, the system and found it to run perfectly, as once more per the written terms of the contract. Yes. The uh, uh, second part of the paragraph sir, goes on to state the uh, defence of the defendant, uh, specifically that she says the payment was not due until the system had been tested uh, by cold weather. And that the um, 
if that loop radius, sorry, claim radius, I beg your pardon, sir, denies this. Yeah. Uh, I may also point out uh, paragraph 10 that details are given as to the payment date, uh, specifically 28 days after the installation, which is also included in the contract terms. And also that the claimant company uh, sent reminders to the defendant yeah. and received no reply. Yeah. Uh, further, the first time the claimant company or anyone at the company knew that she had any complaints was some three months after payment was due. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. So may I point out that the defendant had ample opportunity to uh, reply to these uh, these letters to address any uh, any concerns or um, purvey any intentions that she had as to the payment, and she did not, yeah. with the result that the claimant was forced to take litigious steps. Uh, may I also bring to attention the document quoted in uh, paragraph 10, GW1. May I refer you please to that document, sir? Yes. <coughs> so you'll see that this is... Um, London Capital Weather Centre report, which states on the night of the purported loss, 28th and 29th December, that air temperatures did not fall below freezing. So it's the uh, defendant's defence that the temperatures that night fell below freezing, thereby causing loss. Uh, may I also refer you, refer you sir, uh, sir, please, to the witness statement opposing the application. Yeah. May I point out that in paragraph 2, in the third line of this paragraph, uh, the witness, uh, well, the defendant, Flora Johnson, states that um, the detailed specification was provided, which, uh, once more, I may point out, is in stated in the contract terms, yeah. uh, and also that she requires, she recalls uh, getting the written quotation dated in March 2010, but she did not really read it, and that she wouldn't have accepted it had she read it. Yeah. So I may I point out that this is not a defence at law. And also highlight the risks, especially with commercial contracts such as this, the dangers of allowing such uh, defences and excuses in terms of acceptance for a contract. Mm. May I also refer you to paragraph 2.1, where the uh, defendant goes on to give details of the uh, uh, purported conversation with Mrs. Williams, the claimant company, in t uh, March. <coughs> Excuse me. That. Uh, Mrs. Williams said that I, have never expect, I never expect payment until my company has shown that its products work satisfactorily. So may I underline that this does not support the defence. It merely falls in line, ties in with the uh, statement in the terms and conditions that the claimant company will test on installation as they have done on the 2nd of July 2010. Mm. Uh, may I refer you please to paragraph 4, sir? Yeah. This uh, makes reference to document FJ1, which is a letter from Snook Heat Sons of Gilcher, which are the claimant's main local rivals. May I refer you to that document, please, sir? Okay. <coughs> so you will see uh, toward the bottom uh, of the paragraph uh, in the last sentence that Mr. Snook uh, states or confirms that uh, an arrangement for um, payment after cold weather testing is not usual and that uh, they would need to draw up a new contract. So once more, may I suggest, uh, underline uh, to you that this does not support the defendant's defence. Yeah. It points out quite strongly uh, that this is not usual in the industry. And furthermore, it is within the uh, defendant's knowledge that this is unusual, and yet the defendant uh, stands by her defence and counterclaim. Yeah. <coughs> so as you're aware, uh, under Civil Procedure Rule 24-2A-2, uh, it is uh, the burden is on the claimant to show to you that the defendant has no real prospect of successfully defending the claim at trial. So I put it to you that uh, this burden has been discharged. Uh, firstly, the terms of the contract are extremely clear. Um, sorry, sir. May I proceed? Yeah, please. Uh, firstly, um, the terms of the contract are clear and unambiguous and have been signed and dated by the defendant. Mm. Secondly, there's nothing to suggest that these terms were amended or changed at any point. Mm. And thirdly, the purported loss took two months after the payment was held due. Uh, and there's no evidence suggesting that it had, it had anything to do with the heating system whatsoever, mm. and indeed may have been due to any other factor, including the defendant's uh, negligence. Yeah. Um, I ask that uh, you enter set up summary judgment uh, in favour of the claimants for the specified claim. Uh, so unless there's anything else I can help you with, uh, this concludes my uh, submissions.
Okay, thank you for, for that, Timothy. Definitely <coughs> uh, profound. Just have a moment to finish. Yes. I may begin. Yes. Uh, so we'll be referring to the same documents as my uh, my friend here. Um, with the extra inclusion, I will be referencing um, the attached document FJ2 attached to Miss Johnson's witness statement right. dated the 6th of the 12th, 2010. Mm. My friend suggested that the real prospect of defence... Uh, excuse me. My friend suggested that the real issue of the case was that there is no prospect of the defence occurring, of the, the, the defendant claiming a defence at trial. Not only that, I will not only try to argue that we not only have the chance to show a defence, but also a counterclaim as well. With reference to the quotation, the, my friend argued that duty had arisen on the 2nd of July, 28 days, duty had arisen to pay on the 30th of July, 28 days after the installation. However, I would argue that the duty had not yet arisen. In reality, the test, the, as agreed under the special terms and conditions, the heating system was to be installed as per, your spe as per her specifications. The defendant's specifications included that it was very necessary that the heating system be tested in cold conditions. This is clearly in the terms of the contracts under the specifications. Therefore, installation has not fully been completed and therefore the duty has not yet arisen for 28 days to pay for the, since the installation. Say, Where does it say what's her? Does it have to be tested in cold water? I'm going to go and just show that. Right. If I could then refer you to, um, to uh, Gloria Williams' witness statement. Yes. If in paragraph three, she so suggests that the debt was incurred and is still due and owing, whereas I'm going to try and show that the debt has not yet arisen. Um, in paragraph five, my, the defendant provided a detailed specification to the defendant, uh, to the claimant, sorry, and I would suggest that it is necessary to take this to further trial in order to gain access to that exact specification to see exactly what that has suggested is unsure exactly what is in this specification and whether that will actually relate to the case that the, there is any mention of, of the need to test under the cold weather conditions. 